Okay. Well, Jeffrey, thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me to speak. First of all, uh, just who's here from the Inns of Court in London? It's always good to know who your friends are before you start a speech. Uh, so I've got a few allies round the table. Um, many of you are starting your careers and in four weeks time I will be ending not just my career at Inner Temple but my entire professional life having been, as I worked out the other day, Geoffrey, a taxpayer for 46 years. So I think I'm entitled to a little bit of pension and relaxation. Um, but I wanted to, as I come to the end of my career in four weeks, I thought you might be interested for just three minutes to know about my very first job in 1972. I had studied law and economics at university, the great uh, University of Leeds in the north of England and my first job took me as a trainee in an international bank to what we now call Nigeria but 46 years ago was in the dying months of a country that tried and failed to get its independence from Nigeria called Biafra. Do any of you even know the name of Biafra today? Oh, yes. I hope a few of you do. But uh, when you look over the history of, of uh, huge uh, atrocities, a genocide, um, and all of the things that you're studying, particularly in the Balkans, I'm afraid dear old Biafra rather gets forgotten. And I just want to tell you, that 46 years later, I still have the memories of my first trip as a 21-year-old young trainee banker uh, to Nigeria, just as the Biafran War came to an end. Three million people died in that war. Well over two million died within the secessionist area of Biafra itself, although if you know your history, you know ultimately the the secession did not succeed, uh, but nearly a million people died in areas outside of Biafra, as such was the ethnic division between people in Nigeria uh, at that time. And I would just like to, for two minutes, put Biafra back on the map for you, because both Biafra and Nigeria generally are, is a beautiful, wonderful country, and in so far as they've created a national identity and people think of themselves as Nigerians rather than Biafras or Yorubas or houses in the Islamic uh, 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 North, um, then the fact that this country has managed to stay together is, I think, a good thing, although at a terrible cost all those 45 uh, years ago. But why was I there as a young banker? There, 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 there were no human rights commissions. Uh, there was no war crimes tribunal set up in The Hague. There was no truth and reconciliation uh, uh, set up. The fact of the matter is that the federal government won and the secessionist state of Biafra lost, if I can put it in those very simple terms. Biafra did not become an independent state. But the two leading protagonists in that terrible war, General Gowan for the federal government and General Ojukwu for the uh, Biafrans, agreed at the end that there should not be any prosecutions. The war had come to the end, it was time to heal the country, and that for them at that time, any sort, even in internal war crimes, uh, was thought to be uh, uh, divisive. And I'm sure there were external influences on both of them that brought this about in the early 1970s. And there was a huge amount of geopolitical uh, uh, economics involved. But from my point of view, what started to heal the nation was not a truth and Reconciliation Commission, 
but it was one of the most massive economic redevelopments of a country the world has ever seen. And the finance for that reconstruction came from the World Bank, which today we would say was a very Western orientated bank. But in 1972, its president was Robert McNamara. Now, unless you know your history of Richard Nixon, that may not be a name, but he was the man who prosecuted the Vietnam War. What a strange move from an aggressive American sort of geopolitical leader to creating a bank that had in its proper title Reconstruction, the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, and I was just one of the very, very small players, young man, uh, that, that was involved in, in the financing of the reconstruction of what we now know as Nigeria. And let me tell you this, when that reconstruction started, the major port, the biggest port in Nigeria at Lagos, could take 12 ships at a time. It was only big enough for 12, and at one point there were 350 ships queuing up to get into those 12 ports. So actually, surprise, surprise, what was the first thing we did was we expanded the ports. And not just in Lagos, but particularly the two great ports of Biafra itself, which had suffered the last. And I'm delighted to say, not so often, but I still go back to Calabar, and I still go back to Port Harcourt, just occasionally to see what happened. And out of that spread the reconstruction. Now, I am painting a slightly rose-tinted view. The geopolitics were immense, Nigeria as a nation hangs together by a thread. Um, uh, uh, someone more recently, Kofi Annan, said that Nigeria was a patchwork quilt of a country, that any one thread, if it broke, and the country could uh, uh, dissolve. But perhaps because Britain had seen what had happened with the partition of India and Pakistan and then, then Bangladesh uh, 10 years early. There was a big effort and it was an idea that you should keep Nigeria together. And I just leave you with this thought, with all of the uh, contemporary things that you dealt with in your study of the Balkans, where it became the policy to let the threads break and let everyone partition out and all had their independent states and their independent governments and some are Muslim and some are Christian and some are in the Eastern Bloc and some are under the influence of, of, of the Western powers. There was a, a great belief in those days that a country was stronger. And of course, Nigeria was a country that was created by the British. If you go back 100 years before the Biafra War, there wasn't a Nigeria. Uh, it, classic example of creating a single entity that is held together uh, today. I have Biafran friends, I have um, uh, friends from other parts of the country. General, General Gowan died so not so long ago, so did General Ujukwu, the leader of the secessionists uh, in, in Biafra. Uh, all I can say is that as a young man of 21, like you are today, that made a searing impression on me that, and I would still say it, properly administered economic development can make a difference. But what also struck me, and this is my final word in my three years in, in uh, Biafra, the thing that suffered most, and I'm not sure it's ever recovered, is the independence of the judges. Thank you very much.